As many of you know, RACP is a very large economic development program in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, typical awards for projects range from 500 to $5 million. Um, there's a lot of unknowns about RACP and uh, these sessions hopefully will uh, shed some light on how the program works. So what we'll do is we'll run through sort of what is PIDC, what is our involvement in the process, what is RACP, how can you use these dollars, um, and then how to begin. So we'll jump in. <laughs> so PIDC is the Philadelphia Industrial Development Corporation. We are the economic development agency for the city of Philadelphia. Each county in Pennsylvania has a economic development organization. Uh, they range in names. Uh, in Philadelphia, we are that agency. And our goal is, this is our mission statement, but our goal is to uh, drive development and growth throughout the city. Um, part of that is to facilitate the RACP program. Um, as in the RACP program, we operate as the grantee. The RACP grant is written to, to us. And that's what we're gonna get to in the next slide is, uh, I'll skip over that one. And to this slide is paid. So one of our sub entities is the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development. And in Pennsylvania, municipal authorities have all sorts of different powers and rights. And one of them is to receive RACP grants. So it's, it's part of PIDC, but if you hear the name paid at all during this presentation or the RACP process, just know for all intents and purposes, it's one and the same. It's a sub entity of PIDC and uh, again, here's sort of the long speech on what technically it is. I don't need to read it out for everyone, but just know it's related to the RACP process. It's related to PIDC, and it's an important part of the flow of funds. We'll go back to who I am. We'll take a breath. Um, so I'm Peter Silo. I'm the director of Conduit Finance at PIDC. I've worked on the RACP program for about nine years. Um, four and a half of that as a, as a consultant for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, working on compliance issues uh, and reporting for RACP projects east of Harrisburg. So I worked on every, you know, all different types of projects from Harrisburg to Philadelphia and uh, north and south throughout the state. So I got to see a, uh, a good plethora of projects and uh, different issues and you know, all the great work that RACP goes to. And then for the last four and a half years or so, I've been uh, at PIDC and acting as the grantee for the project. And my role as the grantee is to walk you through the whole process of RACP from this initial conversation if you're a beginner and you don't know anything about it, we're having this talk today through reimbursement. So the whole life cycle of your project, uh, I'm here to walk you through it, answer questions, do forms for you, uh, be your guide and, and help, help your project. So with that being said, you know, any question you have today or in the future about RACP uh, definitely should be uh, sent my way and I'm, I'm here to help. So RACP is the Redevelopment Assistance Capital Program. You'll hear people call it RCAP, RACP, or other butchered names. Um, I call it RACP, so uh, I hope you can all agree today to, to listen to that uh, pronunciation of it. So the RACP program is for the acquisition, construction, of regional, economic, cultural, civic, recreation, and historical improvement projects. Yes, that is a very broad definition. That means RACP could be used in almost any construction project you can think of. 
there's a few rules and regulations that actually don't apply to Philadelphia particularly, which revolves around bridges, wastewater treatment, um, and other you know, municipal improvements that the city of Philadelphia has its own departments for uh, that these funds wouldn't go to. Um, but really think of the use of these dollars as uh, you know, anything that you hire a construction firm to build, that's what it could be used for. So what constitutes an actual RACP project? A RACP project must be a minimum of a million dollar project. That means there's RACP dollars plus the matching dollars equals a $1 million project. Now the RACP dollars are the dollars that are reimbursable and used for hard construction costs. So what that means is anything that abides by the bidding requirements, the Pennsylvania prevailing wage requirements and the US steel requirements is eligible construction to be reimbursed by your RACP funds. The other portion of your project is the matching portion. So you need a dollar of RACP plus $1 of matching funds to equal a $2 project. The second dollar of your matching funds can be hard construction, can be soft costs such as architectural engineering design work. It could be um, project management. It could be administration of your project. It can be legal work. The general rule of thumb is it has to be a third party. So RACP will not count your internal time or internal, uh, you know, busy up. internal time is the best way to say it, to be billed against your RACP. You would have to go and hire a third party manager, a third party architect to pay them and then use that as match. Um, the matching dollars have lots of requirements of what is eligible as a match fund and what's not. In RACP, the rule of 20 is crucial. So the bonds that fund the program have a 20 year life. So in RACP, you should think of all the items that need a 20 year term. So that means the useful life of your project needs to be 20 years, as well as the funding that matches your RACP grant. So if you're using a bank loan, that bank loan needs to have 20 year term. That includes site control. If your project, if you have a, if you lease your project, your lease your site, that also needs to have a 20 year term lease. There are bidding requirements in the RACP program for the construction portion of your project. The bidding requirements are you need to solicit a minimum of three bids for construction activities. That could be done at the general contractor or construction manager level, or you can go and sole source a construction manager and then bid the job at the subcontractor level, soliciting a minimum of three bids for each trade. We'll get into bidding and funding much more detailed in the following sessions, but that's just a very key item that you should always be thinking about in the program and it, you know, during the whole process. The Pennsylvania Steel Products Procurement Act is basically a US steel requirement um, that also is a key compliance item in the RACP process. Um, and it changes yearly. There's an exemption list of items that are not commonly made in the US. And we can then get exemptions and then use show steel certs for other items. Um, 
the requirement of, pub, of payment and performance bonds in, on your RACP project is an increased expense is something you should note. And then insurance, just a general uh, insurance provided by your contractor for your project with the additionally insured of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I believe Senator Street is on the phone, is on the uh, Zoom here. So I will take a moment to pause to let him uh, say a few words. Senator, can you let us know what name you're under? I'm happy to see if I can unmute you if you're able to hear us. There we go. Hello. Um, hi. I was hoping, hi, this is Aisha Richardson from Senator Street's office, and the senator was in the Zoom. Um, I think he may have popped off, but he does want to welcome everyone and thank PIDC for putting this activity on. So just wanted to acknowledge the work that PIDC did, and thank you. Thank you. We're so happy to have you all as partners and all of our co-sponsors. We're, we're so appreciative of you. Thank you so much. All right, I'll jump back in. And then here's a very common question. You know, what can I do with RACPI? And here are the non-allowable expenses. RACPI is for construction projects. It is not for operations. So if you need money to help fund operations, this is not the program for you. In RACPI, the first thing that that definition of RACPI says is acquisition. Acquisition is tricky to pull off in RACPI. There's lots of nuanced rules around it. Uh, happy to talk to everyone individually who may have a acquisition question about how to make that work, but 100% acquisition is not allowed. So if you, are, if you have a grant for 100% acquisition of a site or a building, that is not allowable. The typical allowance of your grant is about 30% of your total grant for acquisition. So if you're planning to use th these funds towards acquisition, keep a note that about 30% is allowable. The remaining 70% should go towards construction activities. Housing is not, in the rules, housing is not allowed in the RACP program certainly not 100% housing. Again, there's nuances, especially in Philadelphia, with different community development initiatives, different city plan initiatives, where there are projects that include housing that are allowed. So again, this is something that is very nuanced. Please reach out if you have specific um, housing questions, and I'd be happy to answer them individually. Uh, Savannah had, I see some questions about acquisition here and I'll just uh, take a moment. For Kathy, can acquisition be used as match? That's a great question. Acquisition is not used as match. However, the appraised value of a site, the land, I call it land value in general, but it's what's on the site. So land value existing structure can be used as match. And that's in a pre-improvement appraised value of your site. So if you have, if you, and it does not matter if you own your building or not, you can work with your landlord at least to have them release your 
theoretical RACP land value to be used as match. And that's a great tool to lower your matching burden and to increase your RACP dollar runway. And by that, I mean, if you have a dollar of RACP and a dollar of land value for your $2 project, you can then maximize your $1 of RACP and there's less requirements on the matching funds in other um, more technical parts of the program that we'll talk about during the financing conversations. And Savannah asked, is 30% of the total, is the 30% for acquisition of the total budget or of your RACP grant? And that's what I'm talking about is the RACP grant amount. So 30% of your RACP grant can be used for acquisition. And Ali asks about the 20 year term. What about construction portion of the project? So construction or non-construction portion of the project, any matching funds need to be a 20 year term. And when I say matching funds, that is the second dollar I'm talking about. So you have your $1 of RACP, which is, can be a short term finance, could be a construction loan, can be a specific RACP bridge loan, be a line of credit you have, can be all internal funds, existing dollars, other grants. However, you can put it together. That first dollar is very flexible. It's the second matching dollar that needs to have a 20 year term and has a lot more requirements around the source of those funds. The source of the funds can be federal funds, city of Philadelphia funds, what they call local funds, other grants. It could be financing, it could be new market tax credits, it could be bonds. Again, we'll get into the more detailed uh, talk about this during our financing session, but the big rule in RACP is it cannot be other state dollars. So if your organization receives other state dollars, it cannot be used as matching funds towards your RACP grant. Michael asks, can 100% land value be used for the match? Michael, yeah, or sorry, Michelle, excuse me. Um, yes, with exception. It is definitely a gray area in RACP. But if you have a $500,000 RACP grant, you can use up to the value of your grant. So if you have $500,000 of RACP grant, you can use up to $500,000 in land value to make your $1 project. The Office of the Budget will most likely require you to include some buffer in there. So you, it's very rare to see a project that is 50% RACP, 50% land value, and that's it. Typically, there's a third source of funds in there that act as the buffer for, you know, for the project, call it a 1.1 or $1.2 million project. But yeah, the rule for land value is you can use your value up in the matching amount to your RACP grant. So a million dollars of RACP, a million dollars of land. All right, I think I've caught up to questions. Um, again, the drinking water, wastewater requirements, that's really for other municipalities in Pennsylvania, not for Philadelphia. Uh, Daryl, answering your question about how do RACP grants affect loans and refinancing with banks? That is certainly a case by case basis. But there's no carry forward requirements with RACP where once you receive the reimbursement from RACP, you are done with the process. There's no uh, requirements for you to hold on to the property, for you to hold on to the funds. Um, there's, you know, 
you know, there's no, once you're, once you receive the reimbursement, the money's yours and you're, there's sort of no strings attached after that, if that makes sense. And Michelle, for infrastructure, um, for your question, Michelle asks, with regard to stormwater, can RACB money be used for infrastructure? And do you mean stormwater retention infrastructure or do you mean like civic infrastructure such, such as roads and bridges? I think that's really the... Um, the question. So I'll answer sort of roads and bridges is no. Anything, your RACB project stops at the right of way, so stops at the curb. No improvements to a public road can be made. But infrastructure under a site, such as, um, you know, in a course of a normal renovation or construction project, yes. All the, you know, site work infrastructure in that regard is eligible for RACB. Amanda asked, is it considered income for tax purposes? Yes, RACP income, RACP grant is taxable income. And sort of to continue our theme of, you know, what is a RACP project? Here are the items that are reimbursable. Number one is construction. Construction is the heart of this program. So we really try to channel everything towards the construction reimbursement cost. That's what's vital to this, to your project, is to have enough construction to support your grant amount. Acquisition we spoke about, 30% of the grant amount can go to acquisition. It's difficult to pull off and it should not be the main focus of your project. Again, happy to chat with everyone individually with those acquisition questions. Construction permits are a reimbursable cost. So reimbursable cost for construction permits for a project might be 10 to $15,000. Um, but something, if you don't have enough construction costs, that's a nice gap filler to, to get you from your construction amount to your total RACP amount if you have a, if you have a gap there. Interest for financing during construction. I get this question a lot, but it's rarely used in the in RACPs that I see. Um, the interest you pay on your RACP bridge loan or other or regular traditional bank loan during your construction, the interest is reimbursable by RACP. Again, we can talk out talk about this one-on-one, -on -one, but it's very rarely used. Um, and so something you should not count on. Uh, RACPs are really, there's a lot of rules and regulations in RACP and each project is handled individually. So if your project has enough construction costs to match your RACP grant, then that's what we'll use. We'll use the construction. It's the easiest, most straightforward part of the pro process. Doing interest during financing and acquisition are one of the more complicated version, you know, ways to get your money. So we try to keep it simple. It's a confusing process to begin with as we're all, we all are learning today. So just think about um, what's the path of least resistance to get your money and construction is, is that. I'm gonna answer some questions here. Uh, Mickey asks, is there a minimum uh, dollar amount for any particular project. So the minimum RACP project amount is $1 million. And that could be, and that's a mix of RACP funds and matching funds. A typical minimum RACP amount is a $500,000 award. From time to time, they make awards lower than $500,000, but the typical amount is $500,000. So you have a $500,000 RACP grant matched with, you know, land, construction, architect engineering fees to make your $1 million project. Uh, 
Uh, Kathy asked, you mentioned reimbursable costs. Does that mean the awardee is putting up both the construction costs and the match cost? If so, how long before reimbursement? That's a great question. Yes, RACP is a reimbursable grant program. You need to document and demonstrate that you've spent the money before you can receive any reimbursement towards your grant. The typical time is two years right now. It used to run much faster, but the last few years, there's been so many RACP grants awarded, which is a great thing, but it has slowed the process down. So what I advise our clients, our awardees to do, to plan on right now is a two year reimbursement timeline. And with interest rates and other economic factors these days, that can be quite a number to carry if you're waiting on that reimbursement. So something to consider and pencil in on your projects. Luke asks, what percentage of construction match is contingency? Um, that is a good question. As part of the RACP documentation, you're required to put in a contingency amount um, that obviously when it's realized, when it's spent, it goes towards your construction number. Um, there's no requirement on how much contingency your project has to carry, but the Office of the Budget does look for a contingency number uh, in your project and to show that you have funding to back it up, to match it. Um, so a typical contingency I'll see is anywhere from five to 10%. Each project is different. You know, everyone has different risk factors, different contingency requirements in their own project. So again, it's a very case by case basis. There's no number that is required, but typically five to 10% is something I see. If housing is excluded, how can we apply this to construction of affordable housing? That's a great question. So in the, the, rule, the rules state that housing is not allowable, but there are ways to show sort of loopholes in the program to allow for housing. And in Philadelphia, there's a 2035 plan, which calls out the need for housing, especially affordable housing in our city. So that's something that we can use to justify creating housing, uh, rack be spent on housing projects. Uh, currently, I have a handful of projects that do include housing. Um, so again, I've, I've said this a few times, but it is a case by case basis. So let's talk individually and I'm happy to answer any questions about housing. Uh, I'm hesitant to throw out some broad statements about it because I don't want to give the wrong impression of if it's allowed for one project, it certainly doesn't mean it's allowed for the other. So um, I'm here to, to help and please reach out for housing questions. If the land is a value of $500,000, the land can be used as the match, is that correct? Yes, so if your land, if you have a $500,000 grant, and your land appraises for $500,000, that, that will match up for your $1 million project. And it can be used as, you know, as I said, it, can, it technically can be used as all of your match funding, but the Office of the Budget will always require a little buffer to show you have you know, X, extra dollars as a contingency, as some other, um, you know, another buffer in your project. Um, Michelle is asking about what can be done during compliance and audit to expedite the reimbursement. So it's really not during the compliance and audit, it's the whole process. It's setting up your project for success. It's you know, speaking with a consultant, a project manager who has great RACP experience to help you set your project up. And that it means setting your scope of work, uh, doing the bidding correctly, and really guiding you through the process. It's working with PIDC, uh, 
myself or my colleagues on setting your project up correctly before you start construction, before you even apply for RACP, so we can ensure compliance with everything. The, once you're in the process, it's it, sort of the timeline currently, it is what it is, unfortunately. Again, there's too many projects and not enough people reviewing it. So that creates a backlog. But the Office of the Budget, the compliance consultants will ask less, less questions if your project's set up correctly, if it's eligible work, and if you, you know, have talked to someone with RACP experience before that can help you, you know, set your project up for success. Sarah asks, considering the timeline, can the reimbursement grant be a combination of multiple smaller construction projects that add up to a million, but on the same site completed over multiple years? That's a great question. So in construction, there's phases of work. And in RACP, there's phases of projects. I think I'm gonna give you the answer you don't wanna hear, but in RACP, to phase a RACP project, say you have multiple projects to do over multiple years, to be eligible for reimbursement, that first phase or a combination of phases must equal the $1 million project. So if you receive, a, say you receive a $10 million RACP grant, but you want it, but you're not going to do $8 million of the work to, to later, to years away, you can do a first phase of a $2 million RACP project and then have the second phase as the $8 million project. But you're not going to be eligible for reimbursement until you have at least one or multiple phases as a million dollars. And what they look, what the Office of the Budget looks for is that there is a construction contract with a value of 500 or a million dollars. And when I say 500, it, you know, based on your matching funds. So you have a, your construction contract plus your matching funds equals a million dollars. And Andrew asked, can discrete phases of a project be reimbursed or does reimbursement only occur when the entire project's complete? That's a great question. So again, with the phases, if you have a million dollar phase one, you can continue, you can receive reimbursement for that and then stagger your other projects. If your project is a multiple year project, a, a big project that's gonna last many years, you can become eligible for reimbursement during construction. In the past, when RACP moved quicker, that was a very frequent thing. You would get, I don't wanna call them progress payments, but you would achieve compliance and be eligible for reimbursement throughout construction. Now we typically see if your project's not, is not longer than two years, we typically see a one and done reimbursement at the end of your project, but you know, technically and you know, hopefully this backlog of projects will end and you, and you will see much more uh, reimbursements during construction. Uh, Michelle asked another great question about land value. Can you please clarify which part of land value can be used for the match? If you have a large campus, can you use the entire campus or just the footprint? So what the Office of the Budget will ask for is an appraisal. You can have the appraisal of that, you know, one building, that one parcel, or you can have an appraisal of the whole campus. And they'll also ask for a site map. And they'll do some rough math and they'll determine what the value of that site is, that, that portion of your site that you're wishing to get land value on. Typically the Office of the Budget uh, looks favorably upon this and does provide you the number that you would like to see that, you know, the number you were hoping to get, uh, which is a really nice thing. But, you know, the more specific your appraisal can be, the better. You know, 
if you can answer the question for them, that's great. Um, and if not, if that's not available, we'll do our best to present the information you know, that's positive for the project to, to make sure you get that number. Uh, but that's a great question. And we have a question about is RACP for profit companies or nonprofit companies? That's a great question. Um, RACP is for everybody. RACP is for nonprofits, for profits, educational institutions, uh, art galleries, museums, schools, uh, office buildings, you name it, hospitals. It goes to anything. I, I've had, that's a great part of my job. I get to see uh, this money go to all sorts of different organizations across the city that I didn't know existed and you learn about them and you get to work with them. Um, and I hope many of you are on the line today. So that's a great question. Everyone is eligible to apply. Um, not, you can't build your house with it, but if you are a, uh, an entity, uh, you know, you're welcome to apply. And that is certainly a great question. All right, we talked about this a little bit, the match only costs. So the most common match only costs are the architectural design and engineering. Every project is gonna have these expenses. Project management fees, if you hire a third party project manager, which many RACP projects do, those fees go towards your match. Land and building value, uh, again, We've talked about it, or we can keep on talking about it, but that is a great source of match. And that's an as is sales comparison approach appraisal required to demonstrate that value. And it doesn't need to be recent. It could be a few years old if you went through a refinancing or a purchase. You could use that one. Um, if it's if you want to get it a fresh one, that's welcome as well. But again, happy to work with you and you we can, we can figure out the best route for your project. Uh, legal expenses, if you have outside counsel, those can be match costs. Um, and then just sort of the bottom here, again, non-state matching funds for your match, non-state funds for your matching costs. Uh, Daryl asked a question, how many years does a company need to be into existence to apply? And there's, there's no rules around that you can apply uh, day one. So yeah, there's no requirement there. All right, so here is a large part of what I wanna talk about today, the process. So we talked about what is a project, kind of the general guidelines of what can be used for reimbursement, what can be used as match, but to start the RACP process, it is a political program. Projects must be authorized in the Pennsylvania capital budget. And that means you need to work with your local state senators, state representatives to get your project into the budget. And it's not, and it should not be project specific necessarily. It's better to have an organizational line item where ABC company wants to do improvements, you know, wants to do acquisition, construction improvements to my site or to many sites. Um, having broad language in your line item allows you the flexibility to, uh, to create projects around, you know, whatever will suit you at that time. So a typical line item is for, you know, five, call it five, two and a half to $5 million. You'll work with your, your representative to figure out what amount suits your organization. And you'll work with them to get it into the budget. The budget is kind of a mysterious process. Um, it opens typically, you know, once a year, it, it can go years without opening. Um, but to get a line item in the budget, 
is step one in the RACP process. Once your line item is in the budget, it stays there for 10 years until it sunsets. So you have 10 years to draw upon that money before it goes away. And when I say draw upon the money, that's really the hard work. So getting a line item in the capital budget requires effort and organization on your part, but the stronger, more complicated part is to apply and be awarded the RACP dollars. So step one, work with your state reps to get that line item for your organization. Step two is every year, it, sometimes it's multiple times a year, the RACP application window opens. And we're gonna talk a lot in the next session about what you need for that first application. So step one, you know, sort of relationship base of go meet with your state reps, um, have them learn about your organization and you know, get this line item for whatever dollar amount fits your organization. And then step two is to apply against that line item to be awarded dollars. And let me answer some questions here. Do you have to have the land before you apply for the line item to be entered into the budget? Um, the answer is no. You don't need to own the land where your project's gonna be before you, uh, before you have your line item. I wouldn't create a line item that's specific to one parcel of land. I would say, again, ABC company for you know, design, ac you know, acquisition, development of you know, a new facility. And you can then go out and find your parcel where you will build that new facility. Uh, Marla copied and paste uh, a question from the Q&A section. Um, can you use more than one fee? Uh, yes. For, okay, so can you use more than one fee, land and another fee for matching? Totally. So in a RACPI project, you may have two to three funding sources and you may have two to three uses of funds. There's no limit on what, you know, the number of sources and the number of uses. We figure out, you know, what's the best path for your project so we can, you know, so we can move forward compliantly with RACP. So if you have five funding sources, that's great. I see it all the time. And if you have five uses of funds to match that, that's great as well. You can have, you know, construction, architect, engineering, design, permits and legal. So there's five right there. So that's very common. Um, so yeah, so whatever works for your project. Uh, Kathy asks if there's a specific timeline for submitting your application. So again, we're gonna talk about this a lot next week, but the timeline, there's typically a one month period to submit your application that the public is notified for you know a few days, a few weeks before that notice gets posted of the application is opening. The application is done uh, through the Pennsylvania single app, through the DCED single application. Um, we'll get very specific next week in what's required for that. Um, but the most important document for that application is a construction estimate. And so the typical timeline of the RACP life cycle is in the spring, there'll be a one month period for application. And then six months later, there will be awards made. So typically on a March to September type of schedule, but that varies year to year, governor to governor, you know, it's, there's no set schedule. So that's something as I believe all you participants are signed up for the PIDC newsletters. Uh, we alert everyone 
we will send out many blast emails about when the rack view period is opening. So just keep an eye out for that, knowing the springtime is typically when it's awarded or when it's announced, excuse me. Um, Charlotte asks, can you give me an example of a line item discussion with a state rep? So, you know, it's, you know, getting in contact with uh, the state rep's office with their economic development uh, staff member with, you know, depending on your relationships with the representative themselves and, you know, asking, you know, learning about you know teaching them about your organization and the need for this line item and the need for this project uh, that you have in mind so it's all about you know, your relationship there are lobbyists that can do this if you're not equipped yourself to do it um, but the line item conversation is you know you're you're here for a rack view line item and uh you know this is what my project can do for your district and you know all the great great things of jobs, uh, engagement, um, you name it. Every project's so different. I, you know, there's, there's endless examples, but you gotta sell your project. So the next session is, you know, what documents will I need for my RACV application? What help will I need? How much does it cost? And we're gonna have, I believe uh, Lily's not gonna be joining us, but Frank Robinson's gonna be joining us um, from eConsult, who is a economic development consulting firm in the city of Philadelphia that work on many RACP initial e-applications. Um, they have a very good track record of getting projects awarded and they know the nuts and bolts of these applications very well. Um, so that is, you know, a really, it's great to have them as a presenter and we're gonna learn, you know, very specifics. After this session, this session was very broad. Next session, we're gonna be diving into this application of what do I need? What's it gonna cost me to even start the conversation? Um, and then how do I proceed with my project? Uh, Charlotte, yes. Yeah, so, for uh, about your spec language used for the line item. So, on the RACP website, which is a great resource for everyone on this call, go cruise around the RACP website. Um, you know, there's a lot of frequently asked questions, rules, and regulations. Um, read them. If you have questions, ask me. Um, but on that website, there's ever there's the line there's the capital budget for the entire state for RACP projects. So it's thousands of RACP projects and you'll get um, a good sense of the correct language to use for your project. You can sort by county, you can sort all the Philadelphia line items, you can sort um, by organization. So you can find similar organizations to yours and see what they use as a great example. So yeah, there's endless examples out there. Uh, Robin asked if you own an existing building, current mortgage balance of 150 that is valued at 600,000 and construction of 500,000 is uh, and valued at 600,000 and construction of 500,000 is required to complete the project. Does that meet the minimum $1 million rack amount? Okay. So you have a $600,000 appraised value and you have $500,000 of construction would be a $1.1 million project. When you get the appraisal, they do not take into account any debt on the property. So that's a great question, Robert. When RACP looks at appraised value, it does not take into account any debt on the property. So if you, and it goes both ways. So if you purchased a property for $10 million and it only appraises for $8 million, you only are gonna get $8 million of credit. But it goes the other way more, much more often where you, uh, you purchase a building for $8 million and you appraises for $10 million. So yes, your project specifically in that example 
would qualify for a $1.1 million project. Um, Elizabeth, about the next Zooms, I believe you're auto-registered, um, but I will have Marla uh, jump in to correct me if I'm wrong there. Correct, you must register for each individual session. So if you go to our website and for everyone who is on today's call, we will send you a copy of today's presentation. And in that email, we will include the link to the PIDC website where you can register for the remaining three sessions. You must register for each session separately. All right, well, I think we're at a really good stopping point. Um, thank you all for attending today. And you know, please reach out with questions. Again, I can't stress it enough. Every project is unique. Your project is gonna have unique issues. I'm happy to work with you on those. Just reach out, you know, after this session, it's not too early to reach out and we can start the conversation of, you know, is RACP a good fit for you and how we can move forward. Well, we've got two minutes. We want to make sure that we use up all the time for questions. We know this is a very, uh, it can be a very complex uh, program. So we've got time for a couple of questions and then we're signing off. Again, we will send you this presentation. Any remaining questions? Okay, if that's it, we will look forward to seeing you on next Thursday, February 2nd at one o'clock. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us today. Peter, thank you so much. And my colleague, Jasmine Walker, we've been working the Q&A and, and some of the chat. So thank you. All be safe. Have a great day. See you soon.